All right, hey everybody, it's Antagonist Kim, and we're back in Disco Elysium. So, uh, last episode is kind of a lot of crazy revelations that we're not entirely sure are 100% accurate. So, um, we confronted Claje with arresting her because, well, she's been lying and being uh, evasive about our questioning and trying to figure out, like, who killed Lely, which was the, 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 the lynch victim in the back of the Whirlin' in Rags, who was also a mercenary, right? She kind of had, like, a, a fling relationship with him and kind of really fell hard for him. Claget did. Uh, but now she's turning it around once the pressure was on her that she might be getting arrested. That Ruby, the final hardy group member, right, was actually madly in love with her. And was jealous that her and Laylee had a thing. And she, Ruby then killed Laylee, the mercenary... And essentially used a smoke break as an excuse to do the murder, use the the back elevator where the pinball machines are, the back room to walk out onto the balcony, to shoot through uh, Claget's uh, window, and then still have enough time to come down here for a smoke break, and the, the rest of the Hardy Boys would have no idea that she left for that purpose, was kind of like our initial theory. Now, the only reason why I kind of question whether it's Ruby is because there was a comment further back when we were talking to Titus here that it said, yeah, here's the thing. The footprints that we found in the back room, they didn't match any of you guys or her Ruby. So that kind of threw a wrench in it. So did Harry actually mistake the size up there? Or is Ruby actually not involved and we're kind of just pulling the story to pressure one of these guys to tell us where Ruby is and we can kind of get that moving. I also thought that maybe Ruby was forced by the mercenaries to kill one of their own members because they didn't like Lely. Or he was going to spill the beans or do something else, um, you know, that would be a detriment to them being mercenaries and hurting people for the Wild Pines group. Or, I don't know, there's still a lot of questions. I'm not entirely sure Ruby is our perp. We also still need to investigate the other shooting points. I'm hoping that after we kind of figure out where Ruby is, that it might help us initiate where, uh, uh, that we can check the island as well as the boardwalk check actually going off. Because we need to be able to get to this island, and I'm not sure if we need to talk to Joyce to get her to use our boat, or... The only other person I thought about last episode was Lillian the Fisherwoman. She has a boat that we could use too, so I have a feeling it's one of those two, and I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping that after this conversation we'll at least get a, a, an inkling of where she's at and maybe set off those events. But alright, let's get into it. Uh where we left off with Titus was um Let's see. I'll read up to here. Uh, Titus is saying, yeah, I can maybe see it. Because we're pretty much like, okay, we have all this pretty, like, big things towards maybe Ruby really did do it. So Titus says, yeah, I think I can see it. He puts his beard down. There's one thing I've been wondering about, though. Ever since you asked me where she is, add it to your list of suspicions if you want. Listen, I don't know. He smiles a peculiar smile. I don't know where she went. She just up and left. Got real scared, too. Wouldn't tell me where, however hard I asked. Want to know why? Now, see, when it says that she seems scared, that's why I'm thinking maybe the mercenaries are, you know, putting a gun to her back, you know, making, using her to do their bidding. Our character asks, okay, so why do you think she did this? Titus answers, she was afraid I would tell you. He looks you straight in the eye. Maybe she was right. By now, I would, pro I probably would. Kim then interjects and says, she knew there's evidence on her and she knew we'd find it. This is typical suspect behavior. Why fleeing is so incriminatory. All right. Um, we completed the task of asking Titus to give up Ruby's location. He didn't know. But I'm, I'm hoping after a few more shakes of a feather here, he might reveal something for us. So Titus said, perhaps. He looks out the window again. Ask her if you find her. It won't be easy, though. She made sure of that. So let's just kind of get the down low. Um, when did she leave in fear, Titus? Friday afternoon. When you first arrived, I got word the RCM was in town. Then she came in to see me. 
told me she was leaving. That's when we had our little conversation. So what was she actually scared of? I told you. You. Me as an RCM or me personally? No, you. As in the cop with the sideburns and the disco clothes. Oh, okay. So it was me particularly? Uh, no, no wonder she's afraid. I have come to declare the ending of the human experiment. She probably knew me from my singing days. I'm sorry, God, why does everything flee at the side of my shadow? I have no idea why she'd be scared. I'm just a normal cop with regular thoughts in my head. Are we going to be boring cop and cover that up? Um, no wonder she's afraid. I come to declare. That's like the crazy answer. She probably knew me from my singing days. I'm sorry, but why does everything flee at the side of my shadow? Let's go with four. I have no idea why she'd be scared. I'm just a normal cop with regular thoughts in my head. Sure. <laughs> he says without smiling. He even knows. He's like, you're so full of shit. You know, when I first saw you limping here, I thought she was paranoid or sniffing her own supply. But now I'm not so sure. He measures you up. So listen, what else did Ruby say about me, though? She said you have a funny taste in clothes and that you won't stop. Won't stop? Until you have something on her. She said she's heard of you from Jamrock, that you're a human can opener, that you play suspects against each other. Open them up like cans. Okay, now see, I last episode near the end, I kind of theorized this, that maybe even like us, maybe we're like manipulating Kim and everyone to believe a certain narrative just to kind of like squeeze out the information we need. And our inner monologue is going to interject with something else to like say, well, now that you have everyone in your like grasp, let's actually spill the real truth of how, who and how we, th we think it was done. Who killed Lily? You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if, if you as the player don't really know Harry, this character already knows what happened. It's hidden behind like his alcoholic drug abuse situation, right? So this might be an interesting take. And then when they're all empty, just move on, onto the next camp. Don't look back unless there was something you missed. See, interfacing's even kind of agreeing. So we 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 use them and abuse them kind of mentality as far as like getting what we want or getting like quote unquote the evidence we need. So maybe Harry isn't exactly a good cop. He was kind of a bad cop. Let's see. Fucking hell. Titus, did he just the tattoo man shakes his head. Open Angus up like a can. Yes, he did. Now, we can whine about it. Whack him. Or we can go on with our lives. I'm having a go on with our lives kind of day, Al. How about you? So they knew that we played Angus because we, we, we knew he was the weakest one. It's not an actual question. Silence. He nods. Is it true, Kim? Am I actually a bastard? <laughs> you are insistent. You nods. God. Okay. So maybe unless Kim like knows we need to play along to force people to say something, maybe Kim is just as bad as me. I don't know. Anything else? Like anything? Yeah. There was something else. She wouldn't tell me though. I could see she wanted to. It was burning on her lips. This cop Titus. This cop he but she was too scared. Okay. Everard has a file on you, but that's bogus. What she knows comes from somewhere else, from Jamrock. It must be real stuff. Oh God, so that means we have to talk to Ruby. <laughs> this gave me the shivers. We have to actually ask Ruby like the real Harry and she might really know. <laughs> Because we're kind of like building up this Harry that we would hope is a good cop or a good person. But he's he might be the one that actually causes his breakup. He might be the cause of all like everything. Not just it's bad luck or this guy got addicted to stuff. You know what I mean? Like there's something untoward that we don't know about Harry yet that we've yet to un un uncover. Okay. Um. Listen, do you have any clues on where Ruby could have gone? Like at all? She's not far. We know that much. She didn't take her lorry, so she's on foot. Good fucking luck, man. 
She knows this place like the back of her hand. You'll never find her. Yeah, L, and we won't either. She's not really a hardy candidate anymore, is she? The man stares into his beer. She's not, Glenn. Aw, they're like genuinely upset about that. Uh, have you actually tried to look for her? A little. On the coast. Where have you looked for her, more precisely? More precisely? On the coast, past the water log. She's not here, so I'm thinking she's there. Uh, can you tell me where on the coast I should really start looking? Sure. There are some shit houses there. A cinder block town. The fisher folk there refuse to unionize. So, that's one place we haven't looked. Okay. I hear they have a shack where junkies sometimes crash. Time for you to step up. We will start there. One more question. What does Ruby look like? The lieutenant makes sure to take a quick note. Boyish. Hair's red. Dyed. She looks like a Lowry man. You know, here's something interesting. Doesn't Cindy have red hair that's cut short? And she's dressed kind of more tomboy attire? I don't think they're the same person, though. Uh, do you know what she's doing with the Ulan frequencies in her lorry? The what now? I have no idea. Boys? She said she's... Building a a pale emitter. A pale emitter? His voice is very quiet. What? We were talking about radio equipment. She said she's doing Yulon frequencies at a pale something. I don't know more. Interesting. This guy barely understands what he's talking about. There you have it. Pale something. Interesting. It's not much, but it'll do. Thanks, guys. It'll have to. Shake it. His grip is firm and reassuring, like holding a piece of unpolished granite. About to say, I mean, Titus and the gang is rough around the edges. They do vigilante shit, but I think they genuinely mean well for Martinez, so that's why I shook his hand. All right. Not just granite, tightly packed RCM sergeant material. You should be a cop, Titus. When are you gonna get it through your dumb head? I already am. I just wasn't sure you were. And he still isn't. People aren't afraid of good cops in the way Ruby was afraid of you, he thinks, then turns back to his men. He still isn't. People aren't afraid of good cops in the way Ruby was afraid of you. So it's either Harry is actually a bad cop, like, manipulative to the extreme, or Ruby is genuinely afraid because Harry is actually, like, a very clever cop and knows how to break people to get, like, he knows, like, the legal way to, like, pull evidence out of people. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's a lot of, lot to think about. Okay. Ask about Ruby... Ask the fisher folk in the village. Maybe their leader knows something. Okay. This was kind of what I was looking for. So maybe Lillian might be our person to look, f get a boat ride. I guess let's just go straight there before it gets too late. It's 2100 hours though. Let's see. Hello? You think you have a pretty hot suspect right now, don't you? That ruby of yours? Yeah, and... Notice how it came together without casting too much suspicion on Classia. It was nice and ruby-centric in the end. Oh, see, this is them saying, hey, you might still have a thing for her. What do you mean? Anything strike you a bit off about this mishmash? Well, the bullet didn't have to come from the roof. It could have come from anywhere on the coast. Yeah, this, this is exactly what I was thinking. The footprint doesn't match the workshop, though. No, they didn't. So no one has mentioned hearing the shot. Notice how this hasn't come up at all. Even Hardy and his boys didn't mention it. Neither did you. And we could still think the bullet came off the coast. Absolutely. It could have come from anywhere, but you're suddenly so certain it came from the roof behind the window. All right, well, let's, let's sidebar this. That's right. 
Finish thought. Just finish it and conveniently go on. She's watching you leave right now. You know that. Free as a bird on that roof. Lighting up a cigarette and thinking, am I glad Ruby's in this shit and not me? Don't listen to this guy. The theory was solid. He's just jealous. Move on. It's no use harassing her further. I love how <laughs> all these guys just fight in our head. It's great. Um, map. Let's do a fast travel, which I found out we could do last time, guys, which is wild. Wish I had knew this a long time ago. Let's see. Is Lillian still here? She is. What about Fisherwoman? I think everyone is, in general, still here. Let's ask the old woman first. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Um, have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around the coast? Nay, I haven't seen anyone lately. Okay, but you know uh, who I could be talking about? This is my little cinder block town. I know what goes on around here. She's being evasive. She knows something. There was a murder in Martinez. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. Would you now? I know how this world works. And it doesn't work when people tell on each other. You know something? We're here to help. Uh, this is like when that man locked himself in the woodshed. We just need to help her come out. This isn't about the union, you know. You don't have to be worried about retaliation. Listen, we know you know something. We're just here to help. I... That you are, Dark Omen. Help yourselves and your organization. Help the storm clouds gather on the horizon. I see, so you know something, but you've decided not to tell us. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, was there something else? I see, ma'am. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. You should look around your shack. Maybe she's rented it out to others, too. Okay. Is that what it is? Is it this thing in here? Okay, let's... I don't want that to establish for Harry, though. Hold on, let's talk to Lillian. Before it gets too dark. Aye, the sea's gonna calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? I'm looking for someone, actually. Oh? Who? I'm looking for a suspect who might have stayed in this neighborhood. Okay. When did this person stay here? Uh, probably very recently, over the past few days. She might have arrived on Friday. Oh. I've been out on the sea for most of the past week. The weather's been good for fishing, so I usually start at four in the morning. Really? Yes, that's the optimal time. Got to make the most of the calm. I've been sleeping like a corpse after. The sea really takes its toll. Now I'm just waiting for the wind to settle to get out there again. Sorry I couldn't help you out. Maybe I can help you find someone else. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Now the boat's here. Oh, it's Joyce. Hello. Hey there. I'll just keep the Cordelici in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. She winds the mooring line post. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to a pier any day. Jet, jet, jetty. Hello, ma'am. Hello, detectives. She fastens the end of the line of the post and straightens her back. It's good to see you here. I only just arrived myself. What brings you here, madame? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. That. And she's also keeping an eye on you. Oh, so you've been spying on us. Spying has such a negative connotation. I did track your progress along the coast, however, and decided I would be better able to assist you from here. Okay, maybe she can give us a ride. Then there's the matter of that little scamp in old lady clothes. She threatened to paint the cordelate she read. 
Like blood, you see. Well, I like it the way it is. White. What is this? Destruction of property? Hooliganism? Elder abuse? And who is this scamp, anyway? We know who it is. It's... It's, a uh, Cindy, right? Do we want to pick this up? I guess. No need. Lillian and I are getting on much better. For one, she appreciates the concept of rent. Okay, so how do you like it around here? Hmm. How do I like it? Uh, she cast her gaze towards the village, slush melting on the cinder blocks. Construction work left half finished ten years ago. Water drips down eaves of Eternite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. The smell of salt and dog shit in the background. It's pornographically poor. The street has no name. All the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? She squints her eyes. I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame, the RCM is on the scene. All right. Politics time. Let's react. Okay. Real men. Real politics. Real thoughts in your head. Um, you're right to be scared. This is all your fault. Uh, you're in no danger. The working class have no idea what's happening to them. God, try not to be scared. This is just the real city looks. This is just how the real city looks. Oh, I'm not frightened, officer. I'd never... Uh, she leans against the railing, looking up at the gray sky. Above you, there forms a quilt of alto cumulus clouds, twisting into each other. The wind tugs and stretches them over the bay. Their cloud shadows slide over the ruins of Revachol West. Wherever they pass, the temperature drops slightly, but perceptibly. Have I told you how they discovered this place? The wind picks up, her raincoat flaps in the gust. This fishing village or this island? This island? No, the Insul Indian Isola. No, you didn't tell me. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. 50 years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. Oblivion? That's so me. 45% is around where I operate. <laughs> Things are getting better, though. I knew you would sympathize. Most Revacholians will never know what this place means. Our home. This island of matter. Or why they were ferried over in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day. For now, how can I assist you in this new location? Uh, tell me now we have time. Tell me something else then. Let's just let her say it right now. Tell me now. We have time. Do we? He glances at his watch, doesn't look like he does. I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. I would not want to delay you. This story she will tell only before she leaves Martinez, at the very end of her stay. Ah, okay. Maybe there is something else I can assist you with while you're hot in pursuit. We'll step back from this. This still doesn't really help us, though. Does this open up new dialogue for you, real quick? Aye, the sea's gonna calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? Interesting. Um, I guess let's look in the shack, but I don't want that to initiate for him unless he'll just follow me. It's getting late. And it's raining. Time to call it a day. We'll look in here for now. We go as tell him in a second. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning.
A brisk coastal wind still howls against the window of the shack. Occasionally, the waves crawl in under the foundation, producing a low hum. Let's listen. The room feels muffled, like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside, it is cold and windy, but you're inside, and it feels safe and warm. What is this place to you? Oh, okay. We've heard this voice once before. Uh, my new hangout where I could silently sit, drink, and die while looking at the waves roll. My forward base for the coastal part of this operation. It's free. That's good enough. I could live here. A possible resting spot for my fugitive is what it could be for. Looks like this is my new home. Wonder where the old one went. I mean, it could possibly be where she could have been. Waves crash onto the beach, drowning the reeds. Far to the south, a congregation gathers to a soup kitchen in a shelter for the homeless. An old woman gives out knitted scarves for free. Far to the southeast, two men and a woman dress themselves in ceramic armor. A shortwave radio hisses on the windowsill. One makes a salute, the other downs a drink. Weapons under the bed. Okay, so here's what I was saying. If we go here after dark, will that other mercenary guy be gone? Because now they're saying a woman is involved. I'm assuming these are the mercenaries. The ceramic armor is the armor we're wearing right now. Maybe. A middle-aged man stands in a rundown shack on the edge of a fishing village. Nothing nods. No one salutes him. No sight of the fugitive. This feels like a Cody Z hideout. Thank you, strange sensation, for a fair assessment of the current situation. No way. I changed my mind. I want to choose again. I think that's a fair assessment. Outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stilts again. It's as if you think the thought, but in someone else's voice. Look under the floorboards. Nice. Just a mirror. Ah. As you look at the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. The edge of a floorboard next to it looks scratched. Move the floorboard aside. Hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. What's in here? Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand, though. Something bad. Someone's night thoughts. A last resort. A bad idea. Let's search the sand and sawdust. You stick your hand in and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Fine dust. And then, something hard wrapped in paper. Oh, maybe this is the murder weapon? What is it? A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. A nine millimeter bullet, to be exact. Fit for all muzzle loaders of that caliber. Like your own Vilius pistol, for example. Bullet, interesting. So maybe our gun was used to kill him? The floorboard doesn't care. But maybe the washerwoman does. You have enough to confront her with. Nice. Okay. Um, and it's almost 2200, which means those guys should be gone. Let me just back out of here real quick. I want to save my points. I think we have like two points saved up, right? I wish it would tell me where we have the points at. I'm, I'm going to hold off on this. Can I fast travel over to the other area real quick? I can. Let's go back to the Martinez waterfront real quick. Because is it 2200? It's at 2200, huh? Hmm. I don't know if they'll leave, though. Okay, well. I'm thinking. Oh. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. 
Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. Winter's grip on the city is loosening. The spring thaw is here. What now? Humid. Your coat shields you from the rain while the city shivers around you. What's in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez, with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Will you ever go there? Will I? No, you are just one of the hundreds of thousands who watch them rise across the bay from Martinez every day. What's down the shore? Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite covered roofs, cinder blocks left over from half-finished construction, a defunct research and development building once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. And beyond that? Coal City, end of all lines. Run your fingers through your hair. Your hair is an oily mess flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smoke stacks rise somewhere in the distance. What is in the east? The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Shake your shoulders again. You shudder, looking down at your feet. Dirty rainwater runs veins into the plaza snow. You realize you have no shoes on. Your feet are red with cold. No shoes on. What's in the north? Capeside apartments. Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clothes lines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. The evening news. And closer to here? A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. The lingering odor of decomposition mixes with that of damp soil. What about south of us? A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. What's on the other side? The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. This is a song lyric, isn't it? Where the hood, where the hood, where the herd at? Why am I not there? Shudder and look further. Why am I not there, though? To be in Martinez, where no one goes, at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal, in the whitest part of town, in the shadow of the day the revolution fell. What am I doing here? Standing in the rain, looking north, where Jamrock Rock City stretches inland. <laughs> we'll ask this first one. I have a brother in the cut. Where the wood at? Shudder look further. In the rain-swept distance, above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. What's above? More coalition aerostatics, way up there, where rain forms. Rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. And below? Collapsed storm drains, old sewage systems flooded with rainwater. Hidden weapon caches from the revolution. Doors leading down to Le Royale. The catacombs to which, for three centuries, 
they delivered the blue-blooded dead. Motherfucker. These spring thaw will not last. The winter will return to Revachon. Okay. It's almost 2200 hours. Dang. So, oh, oh the uh, skill points are here. So we have two skill points. I'm, I'm still going to save those. Are we really not wearing any shoes? No, we're wearing shoes. Maybe anthetically? I don't know. I'm, I think we'll wait here and we'll call this the episode, guys. In the next episode, I want to wait till it's after 2200 when those p folks are supposed to clear away from that uh, uh, picketing area. And I'm hoping maybe Measurehead isn't there so I can just go up there and secretly open it. Or see, like, pretty much I want to gather that box that's in the corner and I want to see if I can open the thing and then just go back to the shack and sleep and see if it starts anything or crazy stuff happens. But yeah, guys, thanks so much for joining me. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.